I want to show you how you can now customize your Excel environment. Like for example, every time you create a new workbook, you're always going to get the same font type, Calibri, size 11, and one worksheet. If you'd like to shake that up and have a new different default font for your new workbooks, size, and worksheets, then let's go up and go backstage, click on File, and I have to scroll down because my screen resolution is pretty small, and select Options here. And you can see on the left hand side you have all the categories and by default the general category is selected so you just need to come over here of course i have to scroll and you want to go down to the section called when creating new workbooks because here we can change the default font now the default font here says calibri but over here it says body font what's that about well the body font is a theme font and if you want to learn more about themes i recommend that you watch my themes training video but to keep it short, or as short as I can, a theme font allows you to go ahead when you're using that feature to update everything within your workbook from one font to another in a single click. That's what a theme font will do for you. So how does that coincide that this is a theme font when we got body font selected? Look at the keyword body, okay? When you click on the drop down arrow, you got all the other different fonts that don't have body in it or have headings, but I'm focused on the body, okay? So keep that in mind, click Cancel, and come up here and click on the font, and you'll notice theme fonts. You have two, right? For your headings and the body of the text. There you go, body. So it's a theme font when you saw the body font there, meaning that when that's selected, Calibri is the only font that's available. And you're like, oh, I don't want to use Calibri, I want to use something else. That's fine if you want to use the theme font feature to update every cell with a different type of font in a single click. If you want to change your fonts here, don't go outside of your theme fonts, but you only have two, right? Well, to be able to choose other theme fonts, you can't do it here. Let me click off. You have to go to the Page Layout tab to the Themes group, because there you have your theme fonts. In fact, to give you a brief overview, a theme is made up of three elements, colors, fonts, and effects. So to keep it simple, fonts, when you click on it, there you go, you can choose something else. Now your theme fonts are going to have your headings and the body of the message. So if you ever convert a cell into a heading style that's larger, bigger, different type of font, or slightly different, that's what it's going to look like. As opposed to the rest of it, the body of the document is going to be a different type of font, but not so different that's jarring. And that's what themes will do for you, to find complementary colors, fonts, and effects that aren't so different that it really messes with the eye here. So if you want to be able to update everything within your workbook, from one font to another, go ahead and choose it down below. And if you don't find it, you can customize it, which we'll cover in a later training video. So going back to our file, down to Options, General tab selected by default, just come down here and you change it from body font. You can't use the theme font because it won't update all the fonts in your workbook in a single click. So you could choose Arial, in which case every time you create a new workbook, and I'm going to change it here, it's going to be Arial, and I can't use the themes. But if you want, you can mix and match it. In other words, you can go ahead and choose Arial here, and then choose a range of cells that you want to convert to, well, on the Home tab, theme font. So that would be dynamic that allows you to go ahead on the page layout and choose a different type of font for that range. It'll update that, but everything else that's not a theme font that doesn't have, well, let me show you, body. <laughs> As we saw on the Home tab, that will stay the same. Or you can just go ahead and eliminate it all together and not use theme fonts. It's up to you. But again, watch my themes training video. This gets a little bit in depth here. But I want to give you enough to give you an idea of where this is going. But again, watch my training video on that. So let me click and drag the title bar back. So I'm centered. Click on font size, go to 10. And then default view for new sheets, normal view. You got page break, preview, page layout view. We'll cover those in a later training video. Right now, I want to keep it normal and then include how many sheets. Now let's do five. Click OK, and then it tells me, please close and restart Microsoft Excel so that the font changes can take effect. OK, that sounds reasonable. I'm going to go ahead and click Okie dokie, close out of here, come down below and click on Excel. Now, of course, if I already have an Excel workbook opened and I want to open up another one, you're not going to have that button to open it up. You can right click on the one that's already open and click on Excel again and it will open up two workbooks. But since I already have one in startup mode, it's not going to do it again. And then go ahead and click on blank workbook and, well, 
I'm going to talk about the startup screen in just a minute and how we can customize that so when you click on Excel it'll actually take you right past the startup screen and into a blank workbook here. So do I have five worksheets down below? I do. And the type of font? It's not body or Calibri which is a, a theme font or it still is a theme font. And how do you know? Well click on the drop down arrow and you can see right there it's got body and it's a theme font. So for every cell that's in my worksheet here in the workbook, anything that I select is going to be Arial size 10. So if I go ahead and I say, okay, this cell, I don't want it to be static. I want it to be dynamic and use it as a theme font. Then just come up here, change it to the body, unless it's a heading. Change it to the body here, and you can see it's Calibri. It's now a theme font. So I can go to the Page Layout tab, click on Fonts, and choose a different theme font, and it'll update just that cell but to make it more beneficial instead of just a single cell. If you had a bunch of cells throughout the worksheet here and on, well, other worksheets that are going to be dynamic that you want those theme fonts, it'll update all of them in a single click. So that can be very helpful. Let me go ahead and hit my undo. So I can undo this when I click on the home tab. It's no longer Calibri. It's back to Arial. So you make mistakes. Don't forget your undo. Well, that comes in so handy. And if you want to redo your mistakes, well, then go ahead and hit redo, and it's back to Calibri, but I'll undo. Okay, let's go backstage again. Click on File. Let's go down to Options. And we just went over this. Arial, okay, I just want one worksheet. Let me update that here. Again, we're still on the general category here. That's the default. If we want to move to other categories, go ahead and select them. And then down below that, let's go to the next section, Personalize your copy of Microsoft Office. Let me go ahead and scroll down, so we're a bit more up at the top here. And notice how it doesn't say Excel, because what you do in here updates all the Office applications. Like for the username, it's got my login, training, and I want to update that. And the reason being is because whenever I create a new workbook, it's going to tag that name as the author. If I'm okay with that, then I can leave it as training. But not only does it do that, but it ties that name to comments that you insert, and also identifies you when sharing your workbook with others. So let's go ahead and type in my name here so I can get credit. And then down below, you can use what you have when you sign into Microsoft Office. If you have a Microsoft Office account, which I'll go over in just a minute. Or if you want to always use the values that you have here, regardless of what you have when you sign into Microsoft Office, then go ahead and check the box. I'm not going to do that. So I'll uncheck it. And then the Office background here, well, that's this right up at the top of the ribbon. And that's only available when you sign into Microsoft. So let me go ahead and close out if you have a Microsoft account. If you don't have one, then you won't see my lunchbox here, which prior to this, when Microsoft wanted to let you know that you were connected to their servers, they had a bunch of lines and circles and arrows. It looked kind of like spooky, like it was some cyborg sci-fi movie, like you're all connected. I'm, well, you are here, but hey, who's afraid of a happy toast or some juice boxes or an apple? So that's to let you know that you're signed in, as well as seeing your name here. So I'm signed in. If I click on it, I can go ahead and switch accounts. Or if your name's not there and you want to go ahead and create a Microsoft account or log in, well, for me, I'd have to click on switch accounts. And I can come down here. When you click on sign in, it'll ask you, let me click on add account. It'll say, okay, give us your email address. You don't have one? Well, create one. Go ahead and click on Create One and then follow all the prompts in the window and make sure you're okay with the terms of use and privacy and the, their policies and everything. And if you're okay with that, you create one, type in an email address, click Next, type in your password, and you will log in. Once you log in, then you can come here and go Backstage and go down to Options. I'm picking up the speed a bit. I assume you're okay with this. And then you can go ahead and choose an office background. Like instead of lunchbox, we can go to stars. Ooh, let's see what stars look like and click OK. And ooh, they're chunky stars. Oh, that's fun. Let's go back, file, scroll down to options. And uh, I like lunchbox because that's fun. And then below that, you have the office theme, which is colorful. And that means colorful for like Excel, it's going to be green. For Word, it's going to be blue. And access is going to be red. So you can change that if you don't want it to be too colorful and maybe go to white. Now when you do that, remember it's Office, it's not Excel. So if I go ahead and I select white and I click OK, it updates it up at the top and oh, now I can see everybody here. 
the juice box and the apple. In any case, I get distracted. It also updates in Microsoft Word Access. So if I come down below, I already have Microsoft Word open, and I right-click, and I go to the program, and I open it up, left-click. Oh, there we go. Okay, so i got to do a blank document to open that up, and hey, there you go. It's not blue up at the top, it's white. And I can do it also in other programs. So, the same steps. Click on File. And i got to scroll down to Options. General tab selected by default. And there's the Office theme white. I can click and go back to Colorful. Click OK. That goes back to blue. Close out. And that's back to green. Okay, next, when you open up Excel, you get that Start screen. If you don't want that Start screen and you want to jump right into a blank workbook, then let's go backstage again and click File and go down to Options. And then still in the General category, I need to scroll down to the bottom here. In the Startup Options section, right down here, show the Start screen when this application starts. Uncheck it. And then click OK. And then Close Out. And I'm not going to save it, so next time I open up Excel, let me come down below and click on Excel. It goes right past the Start screen and right into a blank workbook. Awesome. I'm ready to go. And then finally, when you're done making some changes here or adding some data and you want to save your workbook, when you come up here and click on the Save button, it's going to, when you save it for the first time, perform a Save As, where it's going to ask you two questions. It'll open up the Save As window, and it's going to ask you what name do you want to give it, because the title here, Book 1, I mean, what's that about? Give it something pertinent to what you've got going on down below. Maybe it's your sales chart, so call it Sales Charts for 2019. And then also it's going to ask you where do you want to save it. So once you answer both those questions, next time you click on the Save button, it won't ask you those again because it knows its name. It's Sales for 2019 and also where it is on your computer. So when I click on Save, it takes me backstage. I don't know about you, but for me, if I don't want to go backstage and I want to open up the Save As window, well, to do that, I have to come down below and bypass saving it in other places and click on Browse so I can save it to my computer, and there's the Save As window. Well, that takes too many steps. I don't want to do that. So I can go ahead and close out of that, and I'm backstage. Let me go down to Options, and then over in the Categories, select Save. And then right here, Save Workbook section, go to this box right here. Don't show the backstage when opening or saving files with, with keyboard shortcuts. Well, it's not just with shortcuts, but it's using the mouse too. So when I check that to not show the backstage, uh, and go ahead and click OK. When I click Save, is it going to take me backstage? No, it takes me to the Save As window. So when it comes to saving to my desktop, I can save myself a click and just go right to it without having to go backstage. Now, where is it saving? It wants by default to save it in the Documents folder. If I don't want it to be saved in the Documents folder, but maybe always in another folder or on my desktop, well, let's go backstage again. Click on File, to Options, and we want to go to the Save category, still in the Save Workbook section, and then come down below to the default local file location. So by default, it wants to save it in the Documents folder, logged in as the training user. If I want it to be saved to my desktop, Every time I click Save to point right to the desktop, well, then I can go Desktop. But if I want it in the Exercises folder that's on my desktop, okay, I need a backslash, and it's just above the Enter key on the keyboard, and type in Exercises. Make sure you spell it correctly, otherwise it's not going to work. And click OK. Then click Save. Where does it go? To the Exercises folder on the desktop. Oh, happy days. Let's go ahead and close out of there and know that if you need to go back and make any of those changes, again, file the options in the Save category. And I'm going to do that right now to Options to Save because I'd rather just save it to the desktop like that. OK. Click Save. Now it's going right to the desktop. Beautiful. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please look in the description below this video.